One of the real pleasures of my position is the opportunity to assist in the induction of our most deserving, of the most deserving members of this WKU family into our Hall of Distinguished Alumni. This event represents a blending of WKU's past with its present while offering great hope for our future. This year's three inductees, Mr. Bob Adams, Dr. Thomas C. Meredith, and Mr. Kenny Perry, are all individuals who serve as embodiments of the WKU spirit. Now, with their inductions into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni, future generations of WKU students will know these names well. They will be inspired by their accomplishments and find in them role models in their own lives. It is an honor and a privilege for me to recognize each of today's inductees into our Hall of Distinguished Alumni. This honor conveys our highest respect for each of these three individuals. All three of our inductees have carried the WKU spirit with them throughout their successful lives and careers. They are a source of great pride for all of us in the WKU family and a source of inspiration for our students. And I extend my gratitude to each of them for what you've meant to this institution and the degree to which you continue to carry the banner of this institution so well. John, if you will come forward and help me assist in the presentation of each inductee, we will now proceed with our recognitions for the 2007 Hall of Distinguished Alumni class. And I start with Mr. Bob Adams. I get a little extra kick out of this one because I was a student in our, was then mass communications program when Bob Adams was, I was a very young kid and he was a young professor at the time. So this is a special personal meeting, Bob, to have this opportunity. Bob Adams has been a fixture in the office of the College Heights Herald since 1962 when he began as a student on the Hill. After graduating, he became a faculty member and the advisor for the College Heights Herald and all of our student publications. Under his leadership, the College Heights Herald and the Talisman Yearbook have consistently received top honors from such noted organizations as the Associated Collegian Press, and the Columbia Scholastic Press Association. Just a few of the honors Bob Adams has received during his distinguished career, including being named Journalism Educator of the Year by the National Association of Black Journalists, and the Distinguished Newspaper Advisor Award from the National Council of College Publications Advisors. In addition, he has been inducted into the College Media Advisors Hall of Fame and the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame. Tomorrow, we will dedicate the Adam Whitaker Student Publications Center. The facility is named for Bob Adams and the late David B. Whitaker, both of whom contributed immeasurably to the success of our world-renowned WKU School of Journalism and Broadcasting. And as of today, both of these gentlemen are, mem both of these gentlemen are members of the WKU Hall of Distinguished Alumni. Bob Adams is a highly respected journalist and faculty member in one of the nation's premier journalism programs, but more than that, he has been a mentor to thousands of students who have come through this institution. To all of us in that group of students for whom he has served as a mentor, he isn't just an award-winning faculty member or a distinguished alumni, he's simply Mr. A. It is a pleasure to induct Bob Adams into the WKU Hall of Distinguished Alumni. If you'll turn your attention to the screens, please. Our first inductee, Mr. Bob Adams. Robert Bob Adams, known affectionately as Mr. A by students past and present, has a dedication to his craft few can match. 
Mr. A was always the one who kind of was that rock, that foundation that kind of helped reinforce good ethical standards, good decision making, good journalistic standards. Um, there's no question that the reason that uh, there is, that that continued to, to last through generations of, of student journalists was that Bob was there. And it, it wasn't in a, any kind of you know, heavy handed way, it was always just, have you thought about this? Have you looked at that? What do you think about this? As a student himself in the early 60s, he became an integral part of the budding journalism program at WKU. I've always been interested in journalism. It's something I, you know, when I got here my first semester, I had a journalism class with Ms. Frances Richards and continued the interest and continued taking journalism classes and eventually became editor of the Herald. And It's just what I've always wanted to do. This is the perfect job. Graduating with a BA in 64 and his master's in 65, Mr. A began his tenure on the Hill. He became advisor to the College Heights Herald in 68 and helped bring a standard of excellence in student publications that still stands today. But he would say that it was the students that deserve all the credit. You know, the thing that strikes me the most about Bob is um, that I think he, he taught um, generations of, uh, of young journalists is, is his humility, um, his ability to just kind of gosh shucks, you know, um, you know, I didn't do anything, I didn't, I didn't add that much to uh, this. It was all you, it was, you know, the students who, who accomplished, you know, ward after ward after ward after ward. You know, it, it wasn't Bob. He he was just here the whole time. It was always in his mind. It was the students uh, who earned every one of those awards. The student is at the center of Bob Adams' career at WKU, teaching, mentoring, and befriending generations of future journalists. You know, there's one more thing I wanted to share about Mr. Adams that a lot of people um, don't um, understand the, uh, the, 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 they don't understand the impact that he's had. Bob Adams and Jim Hyland, you know, are two white guys from Kentucky who established a minority journalism workshop 25 years ago. And that workshop has produced I don't know how many journalists and I think that I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the impact that he's had on African American, Asian, Hispanic, Native American journalists and he has you know made an impact on my life. In the newspaper business folks who figure out newspaper circulation have a uh, phrase they call the pass along rate. In other words, if you buy a newspaper, it's likely to be seen by three or four other people too. And I was thinking with Bob at Western, the pass along rate is tremendous because, you know, he taught me and, and a lot of things that he taught me, I've tried to pass along to uh, younger students and interns over the years. And, uh, you know, so the, the number of lives that he's touched is, is tremendous. As student publications director, he's been a part of the national recognition that the College Heights Herald and the Talisman Yearbook have garnered over the last few years. He's mentored Pulitzer Prize winning journalists, and he's been awarded the professional accolades that he richly deserves. But he'll tell you that it's his students that deserve the credit. One of his former students says that for Bob Adams, teaching is not a job, it's a love and still remains that way, with a fire that burns brighter today than when it began many years ago. This is a perfect job, and it's perfect because we continue to get good students. I was looking back at people who worked in the newspaper in, the early, in my early years, and it, it almost reads like a who's who in Kentucky journalism and, and journalism in general. And we continue to get students like that and as long as that happens, then there's really not any place that is better to be. They maybe learn a little bit from me, but I learn most everything I know from them. And as long as I continue to, to learn and they continue to teach, we're going to have a good relationship. Adam's students are fervent in their support and love for the man they call Mr. A. He has a scholarship in his name that was begun by his former students, and the new publications building on campus will carry his name as part of his legacy of service to the students he cares so much about. Well, the school motto is, the spirit makes the master. And when I think of a spirit, I think of, um, you know, this uh, 
this thing that passes from person to person to person. And Mr. Adams um, has the ability to, you know, he just exudes this enthusiasm and this passion for journalism and the university and the newspaper. And it's infectious. It moves from one person to the other. And I just think that he's done a wonderful job of passing the spirit of the university um, from student to student, from professor to professor. Bob Adams is a humble man that has touched many lives. He's surprised by his success and quietly goes about doing what he does best, being a teacher, a mentor, a friend. 2007 Hall of Distinguished Alumni inductee, Bob Adams. Thank you, President Ramsey. Um, members of the Hall of Distinguished Alumni, the WKU Alumni Association Board of Directors, and friends of Western Kentucky University. First, I want to thank the committee who made the selections. I'm honored to be included among such a distinguished group of people. I'm especially honored because I never really expected to be standing here today. I want to introduce you to some special people, most everybody in this room. <laughs> <clears throat> My wife Sandy, I don't know if you all understand, or <clears throat> just wife. Uh, she puts up with the long hours, sometimes seven days a week. Thanks for tolerating my addiction. My son Andy, who literally grew up in the Herald office, has some pictures of him when he was uh, oh, about so big. <clears throat> uh, stepchildren, uh, Chad Whittington, Nicole Whittington are here. Uh, missing from the family tree are Clint, who has a class today at this time, and didn't want to miss class. <clears throat> I wish his teacher were here to hear that. <clears throat> also, Tara is a, an assistant coach with the Campbellsville volleyball team, and they're playing in the conference tournament this weekend, and she felt like she needed to be there. And her husband, and also Justin, who's working in Ohio. My brother Bill, and his wife Jenny, out there somewhere, and nephew Forrest, who's a reporter. <clears throat> they came from Northwest Minnesota. And I certainly appreciate that. My father-in-law, brother Kenneth Grizzle, from Glasgow, who has a, an amazing record himself. He's been pastor of the same church in Glasgow for more than 53 years. At least three people are watching from above today. My mom and dad and an uncle, some of you may know Billy Adams. Uh, he was an ag teacher at Western for many, many years. In fact, they're the ones who put together this scheme that brought me to Western Kentucky State College in 1962. If we had more time, I would tell you about the scheme. There are a few other people I want to recognize, but I don't want to start singling out individuals because I've been told to keep this short. And those of you who've been to functions where I've spoken know that that's not necessarily my style. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to say thanks to a special friend, uh, Don Collins, who I've learned started this nomination process rolling, and to his wife, Cheryl. Uh, Someone alluded to the scholarship, and it was Don and the sort of spearheaded that. And I'd like to let everybody know that that scholarship fund now has more than $20,000 in it, and students are receiving the benefits of that every year. The other person is a special friend with whom I have worked for the past 32 years. Uh, some people consider the Herald and Talisman kind of a mom-and-pop operation. 
because we try to take care of the students like they're a family. We try to take care of the money like it was ours. So if I'm the pop, Joanne Thompson is the mom. Joanne retired a few years ago, but thankfully it continues to work part-time plus. I've often said you can hire someone to do the job that she does, but you can't hire someone who cares so much for the students and for the Herald and Talisman. She told me several months ago that she wasn't able to get anything done because she was always putting information together for some award I'd been nominated for. <coughs> it has been kind of a, an interesting time in the last couple of years. But it takes a special person to work behind the scenes with someone else always getting the credit. <clears throat> like most men, I often forget to tell her how important she is. Maybe I can do that now. <clears throat> As a colleague and a friend, she has kept me out of trouble more times than I'd like to tell you about. <clears throat> As I thought about the opportunity to speak today, names kept racing through my head. You know, every time I think about this, I would just think of you know, different people who've been such an important part of my life at Western, which has been a, an important part of my life, period. Um, Dr. Dero Downing was the admissions director who took a risk and let me enroll in Western back in 1962. Dr. Wilson Wood hired me to teach a freshman English class. Some of you know Dr. Wood. Um, I thought about the time that uh, Jim Ossenbaugh and David Sutherland and I shared a one-person office in the basement of the Downing University Center. We almost had to put bleachers in just to sort of <coughs> keep from running over each other and students you know, having accidents coming and going. And then there was Boss. Dave Whitaker, uh, as has already been mentioned, also a member of the Hall of Distinguished Alumni, Distinguished Hall of Alumni, whatever this is. <clears throat> he was one of my mentors. He brought uh, a professional approach to the Herald, the Talisman, and as many of you know, was the first head of the journalism department at Western. Ross could tell stories better than anybody and longer than anybody. <clears throat> I could fill my three to five minutes reminiscing about the many, many people who have shaped my life. You, some of you are looking at your watch like I've already done that. <clears throat> For all intents and purposes, Western has been my life, uh, maybe sometimes too much. I'm certain that the WKU Alumni Association didn't realize how many people were really being welcomed into the hall this, on this occasion. Um, the program says three, but I'd like for all the people who have some connection to the Herald and Talisman and student publications to stand for just a minute. Do that. Without these people and many others who couldn't be here today, <clears throat> I wouldn't be here either. I'm being inducted today not for my accomplishment, but for theirs. To them, I owe this unbelievable honor. And to Western, I owe my eternal gratitude for the opportunity to work with the brightest, most motivated, most committed students anywhere. And most importantly, the best people. It continues to be a blessing to have a job that I love. Every day when I get up, I'm ready to go to work. And I've talked to a lot of people who don't like what they're doing, even despise their jobs. That's never been my problem. <clears throat> Sometimes it's not going to work. It would probably be better. A lot of people don't really understand what I do, and sometimes I'm not sure either. <clears throat> okay. 
as a newspaper and yearbook advisor, um, I am really an advisor. The students make all the decisions about the content of the newspaper and the yearbook. My job is just to be there to help them. And not many people understand that. Fortunately, President Ransdell is one who does. It's the only job I know of where you turn over the decisions to students who are 18 to 22 years old and hope and pray that they make good decisions and that they're successful. If they succeed, everybody says you're doing a great job. When they make mistakes, then everybody says you're doing a lousy job. But it's really their job to do, and thankfully our students have weighed heavily on the success side. And we really base our success in student publications on our students. When they get jobs and become productive citizens, we feel like that we've succeeded. Anybody who measures success on contests or this game or that game is likely to be disappointed. Although the Herald and Talisman have been successful in state, regional, national competition, our students are still our measure of success. I've occasionally been asked what the hardest part of the job is, since I'm not in a position to make those decisions about what goes into the paper or the yearbook. Well, certainly not um, staying until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning twice a week to see the paper gets out. Well, actually, it was 4 o'clock this week, <coughs> Thursday. Is that yes yesterday? Whew. <coughs> uh, it, it's not working, you know, th three or four late nights getting talisman deadlines off to the printer. Uh, it's not even uh, talking to administrators who are unhappy with things that they see it in the newspaper from time to time, or the professor who calls and wants to keep his DUI out of the newspaper. Um, the hardest part is one that I've never done very well, and that's um, saying goodbye to students who have become good friends. Even though that you can see it's a temporary goodbye, simply by the number of people who are here today. It may be getting easier as I get older, but um, it's still hard. In fact, last year, the theme of our end of the year banquet, I, I found to reading Dr. Seuss. So don't cry because it's over. S smile because it happened. When saying goodbye to students gets easy, then I know it's time to turn the job over to someone else. I could go on for the rest of the afternoon. Some of you know that. <clears throat> the other people are getting concerned. <laughs> but the next two people you're going to hear from have impressive accomplishments that they've earned, and, and this is their time in the spotlight, although President Meredith told me that, that <clears throat> the, the spotlight is only temporary. But my success is wholly dependent on other people. And I want to thank everybody who's contributed because this is really your day too. Thank you very much.